Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Control, going in now. Okay, Virgil, you've got only one chance. been the greatest report of the year. And we can't do a thing about it. I don't know why they're so touchy about having their pictures taken. We've got a job to do as well as they have. Mobile control from Firefly. Returning to Thunderbird 2. FAB, I'm returning to Thunderbird 1. Right, Joe. Get on that camera. What are you gonna do? We're gonna get that story of the year. Thunderbird 1 from Thunderbird 2. Ready for liftoff. Clear to go. See you back at base, Virgil. Okay, Joe. As soon as Thunderbird 1 takes off, start shooting. Cover the takeoff. The automatic camera detector. Someone's photographing the ship. I told you guys no pictures. Listen, Buster, you've done a great job here today. Now let me do mine. I said no pictures. Please destroy them. 
If you think I do that, you're crazy. Crazy fools. and bluffing and it is possible there goes your story Ned Thunderbird 1 to Thunderbird 2 take off from danger zone to late everything now FAB fill you in with details later FAB Scott the radio base and report It was good to hear from you, and I was delighted to receive your kind invitation. However, well, go ahead, Virgil. Rescue operation successful. Returning to base. Scott delayed on takeoff. Good work, Virgil. Keep in touch. Now, uh, where were we? However. Oh, yeah. However, due to other pressing business, I shall have to decline, but would like you to know that your scheme to move the Empire State Building strikes me as being daring and imaginative. Redevelopment of obsolete areas is vital, but so too is the preservation of national monuments and institutions. The Empire State Building is such a monument. Thunderbird 1 from Thunderbird 2, picking up radar reflection of surface vessel. Well, what's so special about that? It's speed, Scott. It's phenomenal. Hey, it could be the Sentinel. The Navy's new strike vessel. Speed 200 knots, sir. Right. Ask missile control for routine report. Unidentified object approaching. Height 2,000 feet. Airspeed 5,000 miles per hour. Okay, scanners. I have it on my screen. Give me its course. Yes, sir. All nine six. Magnetic. Do you realize what this could mean? I'm afraid I do, sir. Any notification from Central Control of military aircraft in this area? The last report indicated this whole area to be a green. Right. Stand by interceptor missiles. Get immediate clearance for launching. Thunderbird 1 from Thunderbird 2. I'm going to change my course, Scott. The Sentinel must be tracking us, and we don't want to give them a steer to our home base. Yeah, good idea, Virgil. I'll do the same when I get closer. Resume course for base when you're out of range. FAP. It's changing course. Scanners, what's our new heading? 075 degrees magnetic, sir. That puts it on a direct course for New York. What is it, Clayton? What is it? I only wish I knew, sir. It's too fast for an aircraft, and it's too slow for a missile. Message from Central Control, sir. No aircraft scheduled in your area. Treat unidentified craft as hostile. Sound battle stations, all missile launches to be at go.
track station. Trigger interceptor missile, stand by. Ten seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Fire! Missiles! Thunderbird 1 and base from Thunderbird 2. Under missile attack. Virgil, switch on the jammer. Try and throw him off course. I think it's too late, Scott. We'll take evasive action. FAB. It's no good, Scott. They're still coming dead at me. Gain altitude, Virgil. Pull her up. Are you okay, Virgil? Come in, Thunderbird 2. Still here, Scott. Boy, that was close. They exploded right beneath me. Feels like I've got some damage on my tail unit. Twinkle interceptor missiles. For second attack. Five seconds. Changing frequency to Four, combat jammers. Three, two, one, zero. Fire! Here we go again, Scott. Get that jammer working, Virgil. I'm catching up on you fast. They've changed frequency, Scott. They're unchecked. They're coming straight for me. Hold present altitude and climb one second before impact. We might be able to throw them. More height, Virgil. You need more height. rescue from Thunderbird 1. Scott, how's Virgil? I don't know, Father. I can't get through to him, but he's on fire. I can see him in the distance. I've been on to Washington. Let's hope they can stop this senseless attack. Washington, sir. Emergency call. Message to Sutton Commander. Stop attack immediately. Unidentified aircraft is a Thunderbird machine of the International Rescue Organization. Clayton, missiles 5 and 6, destroy them. Thunderbird 2 from Thunderbird 1. Come in, Virgil. Virgil, are you okay? Virgil, pull her up. Can you hear me? Come in, Thunderbird 2. Virgil, you're crashing. Pull her up. Virgil, get a grip on yourself. You've got to pull out of that dive. Sure, Scott. Engines are running smoothly, but the tail section's giving trouble. Well, we'll be able to make it back to base. I'll let you know. Right, here's the position. Virgil's trying to bring Thunderbird 2 back to the island. It's on fire and badly crippled. Gordon, Allen, stand by on the firefighting equipment. Yes, Father. What are his chances, Brains? Uh, uh, well, so, so long as her reactor plant hasn't been damaged, uh, her chances are good. Is the reactor damaged, Virgil? I can't tell, Scott. Instrumentation has suffered severe damage. <coughs> How much further to base, Scott? Just another ten minutes, Virgil. It's just another ten minutes. Now, you'll make it, Virgil. I know you will. Uh, Mr. Tracy, have some coffee. Your boys will be safe. You'll see. Oh, uh, what did you say, Kirano? 
father asked you if you would like coffee, Mr. Tracy. Oh, no thank you. Uh, I'd better get over to landing control. If they arrive at all, they'll be here in a few minutes. Good, you're ready. Two minutes. I think I can hear them now. We're nearly home, Virgil. We're nearly home. Undercut down. Flaps down. Banking for final approach. Section B. Virgil. Well, welcome back to the land of the living. Well, what happened to Thunderbird 2? Now, quit worrying about that. She was badly damaged, but she's gonna be okay. There's nothing that a few weeks' work won't put right. A few weeks? But well, that's terrible. Supposing she's needed on call. Well, let's hope she's not. Now, you relax. You need a lot of rest. You take care of yourself, and we'll take care of Thunderbird 2. Going brains. Uh, well, uh, slowly, uh, Tintin. It's it's uh, gonna take uh, some time. Boy, what a mess! Once the new components arrive, we'll have to work round the clock to get her right. Well, this is the tricky part of our operation, trying to keep everything secret. Look, Scott, we order each component from different aircraft corporations. None of them know what they're making. It's only when they all arrive here that the jigsaw fits together. I guess I worry too much. It is good that you are eating again, uh, Mr. Virgil. Hmm, how could I help it with your marvelous food, Carano? Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Hi, Virgil. Got your TV switched on? No, sir. I've seen enough TV to last me the rest of my life. Oh, but this is a special program. They're moving the Empire State Building. What, today? Today. And furthermore, right now. This I must see. You are about to witness, folks, one of the greatest pieces of engineering feats of all time. You say, that's Ned Cook. You know, the guy had to stop filming us at the oil well. Yes, Scott. He'd do anything for a story. In a few moments, the National Television Broadcasting System will show you a construction job that leaves the building of the pyramids in the shade. Today, the Empire State Building here in New York City is going to be moved 200 yards, not piece by piece, but as it stands, all 1,250 feet of it. First of all, we'll explain how this tremendous task is going to be performed. Incidentally, the reason why the Empire State has to be moved is simple. The whole area around the Great Monument has been demolished to make way for modern development. But of course, we couldn't have the old Empire State knocked down, could we? No, sir. Sure would like to have been there today. Yeah, me too. Now, after tunneling under the foundations, 
Hydraulic jacks were placed beneath the building. Then the jacks were raised. And up she came. The next step was to lay a heavy duty track under the building and run it to the new site. Now all that remains to be done is to move the giant building inch by inch to its new site. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But it took 10 years of planning and two years of construction to get this far. Any minute now, the tremendously powerful atomic engines will start to move its gigantic load to the new site. Wait for it. The signal's been given. She's moving. Yes, she's moving. of my broadcasting, this must be the most breathtaking moment I have ever experienced. Hold everything. Something's gone wrong. The ground is cracking under the track. It's like an earth tremor beneath my feet. There is something wrong. The atomic motors are shutting down. a mighty dangerous situation. The ground around the building is crumbling. We are in direct line of fire, but in the tradition of NTBS, we will stay in the danger zone to bring you up to the minute pictures of this fantastic spectacle. Crazy fool, why doesn't he get the heck out of it? Well, like you said, Dad, he'd do anything for his story. It looks as if it's going to be all right, folks. The ground subsidence has stopped, but I don't think we'll see the Empire State move again today. We have just been ordered off this site by the police. There is, I understand, a very real danger that the entire building could collapse at any moment. We will be on the air again as soon as we have... Oh! Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm all right, Ned. The whole area is subsiding, Joe. We've got to get out of here. And fast. We apologize for the loss of your picture. And we have grave fears for the safety of Ned Cook. We hope to bring you pictures of the minute-to-minute -minute happenings here in New York City in a few moments, as soon as we can get a new outside broadcast unit in position. Couldn't have stood a chance. What you are seeing is the result of this terrifying tragedy. The Empire State Building has crashed into a mountain of rubble. It is no more. Help! Can you hear me? Help! That's Ned Cook's voice. 
He's still alive. One moment. It seems we have a miracle on our hands. That was Ned Cook's voice that we just heard. Well, how could anyone be alive under all that light? I don't know. But one thing's for sure. They'll never get him out. Now, our equipment could do it, Father. We've got to get Thunderbird 2 there right away. Scott, you're forgetting. Thunderbird 2 is out of commission. There's nothing we can do. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be no more transmissions by this station for the moment. Ned Cook is trapped under the ruins of the Empire State Building and is in touch with us via his radio microphone. We will be using this channel in order to maintain contact with him. All right, Ned Cook, can you hear me? I can hear you. Just before the building crashed, the ground collapsed beneath our feet. Then the building came down on top of us. Don't ask me why we weren't crushed. It was a miracle. We are now sitting in a hollow about 10 feet wide. We're not hurt, but I can hear water seeping in from below. Uh, of course. Th that's the answer. The answer to what, Brains? Well, I, I, I've been trying to figure out why that area should suddenly collapse. Uh, underground rivers. Underground rivers? Yes, Brains could be right. Many cities have rivers running beneath them. If there was a river uh, running under the uh, Empire State Building, uh, an undetected river, that, that could have caused the trouble. That means water will continue to seep into the hollow that's protecting Ned Cook. He'll drown. If only we could get along that river. That might be possible uh, with Thunderbird 4. But we can't airlift it to New York without Thunderbird 2. Then I'll have to go all the way by sea. You'd never make it. Thunderbird 4 is only a scout craft. She's got to be airlifted somehow. I tell you, I can make it on my own. Look, Gordon, your suggestion is not only dangerous, it's also highly impractical. Even if you made it, you'd only be in time to attend Ned Cook's funeral. Right now, I could get the commander of Sentinel That's and... it. That's it. The Sentinel. They put us out of action, they can put us back into action. I get the picture and I like it. Now, here's what we do. Scott, take off for New York. Yes, sir. Gordon, launch Thunderbird 4 using emergency procedure and then proceed to the position where the fleet exercises are going on. I'll contact Washington and arrange for them to pick you up and rush you to New York. Yes, sir. Good luck, Gordon. What can I do, Father? Go back to bed. Washington, that'll be really great. That's the least we can do, Mr. Tracy. Thunderbird 4, this is base. Over. That's right, Gordon. The Sentinel will pick you up and take you and Thunderbird 4 to New York as fast as they know how. F.A.B. This is Thunderbird 1 of International Rescue calling New York. Come in, Empire State, site control. Site control to Thunderbird 1. Boy, are we glad you guys are around. Is there any news of the trapped men? Well, we've drilled a pilot hole to supply them with air, lighting, and food. Trouble is, the water level is rising. Now listen carefully. I want the entire area cleared. Already done, pal. This site is unsafe. Could give way any time. Right. I'll be arriving in under 30 minutes. I'll need detailed plans of the underground river systems. Thunderbird 1 from Thunderbird 4. I have made contact with Sentinel on being taken aboard. F.A.B., now what is your estimated time of arrival at Danger Zone? 24 hours, I'm afraid. Okay, Gordon. Do the best you can. I 
never knew 30 minutes was such a long time. Yeah, sure does drag. Hey, can you hear something? It's them. International Rescue. This is New York City Police. This area is dangerous due to Earth subsidence. Keep clear. Keep clear. I, uh, I, I've been studying uh, Manhattan Island, uh, Mr. Tracy. I, its base I, is solid rock. Now, uh, underground streams d do exist, but they've never been considered a, a threat. Does that wash out your underground river theory? Uh, no, no. It's possible that over the last um, 100 years, the, the minor streams have eaten away the rock until they've, they've become rivers. What are you getting at, Brains? Well... No recent surveys ha have been carried out. It's going to be a, a difficult task to locate the river. I see. Already it's touch and go where the Thunderbird 4 can arrive in time. And now the rescue could be delayed even further. Go ahead, Scott. OK, Father, I'm here, and I'm set up. Now, here's the situation. Ned Cook and his cameraman are still alive. We can't get food down to them, but the water is rising. Now, according to our calculations, they'll be under about the same time as Gordon arrives. Right, Scott. Here's what you do. Pass breathing apparatus down to them and keep them alive till Thunderbird 4 gets there. Ned, how are you feeling? Now, whatever happens, you stay with it. That's easy to say, buddy, but it's been nine hours since you got on the scene. I know, Ned. We're doing all we can. Sure. I'm sorry. Guess this hanging around is getting me. We're so helpless. And the cold. The water's freezing. Is it still rising? Yeah. It's coming up faster now. At this rate, we have less than 10 hours. We'll be under around 10 a.m. New York to Sentinel. What is your ETA? We calculate 10.05 a.m., Scott. Well, that, uh, that's going to leave things pretty tight. Can you get more speed? Right not. We're at maximum speed now. Answer negative, Scott. 10 hours to New York it is. OK, Gordon. I guess there's nothing we can do about it. Hey, how about that breathing gear? Yeah, we located some units at the Navy Yard. They're on their way. Well, that's something. The water's rising faster, Ned. We're not gonna drown, are we? Hold on, Joe. Those rescue guys, they know what they're doing. They'll get us out. Any increase in the rate of level, Ned? Yeah, we'll be under by 9 o'clock. 9? That means Gordon will arrive one hour too late. Johnson's sending down the breathing gear now. At what capacity are the air tanks? Two hours supply. The safety time is cut to only one hour then. And that allows for no setbacks. Five more hours? Is there no way we can get more speed? Right not. We're tearing the motors apart now. Hey, the water's coming up faster still. I reckon we've got two hours left. Just two short hours. Well, that means you'll have to wear your breathing gear for the last two hours. It's sure cutting things fine. It's not going to leave much air in our tanks. I know, but we can still do it. And we're going to do it, OK? We'll have to use the air soon. Or we'll drown. Hold on as long as you can. The last atom of air in those tanks could be the difference between life and death. 
Joe's in a bad way. This freezing water is getting him. We can't hold on. The water's up to our mouths. We'll have to... Re the mask! Put the masks on! Ned, can you hear me? Are you okay? Ned, come in! <coughs> it's okay. We've got the gear on. Now we've got to sit here and wait for our air to run out. We're slowing down. What's wrong? Well, we're approaching coastal limits. The Hudson and East Rivers are crammed with shipping. We can't possibly go any further at maximum speed. Well, wouldn't it be quicker in Thunderbird 4? Under the shipping? Much quicker. Okay. I'll take it from here. Sentinel to mobile control. Approaching New York. I am returning to Thunderbird 4. FAB, Gordon. What is your ETA now? I'll be near danger zone in 20 minutes. Hope I can find that river mouth. Uh, so do I. In 20 minutes, Ned and Joe run out of air. <laughs> Control from Thunderbird 4. Moving towards East River Estuary now. Thunderbird 4 is on its way, Ned. How's the air going? Too fast for my liking. Can your buddy get here in that time? Yep, he can make it. He's got to make it. Any luck, Gordon? Negative. No sign of an entrance. Hey, wait. I've picked up something. I think I've got it. He's still got to navigate that underground river. And he'll never reach him in time. Ned, you've got to find that underground river from your end. That water is flooding in from some hole. You find it. Thunderbird 4 is on its way. I'm not sure if Joe can make it. Well, he's got to make it. Snap him out of it. Swim around. And find that entrance. Scott, I'm moving upstream. So far, we're in luck. It's big enough for navigation. Keep at it, Ned. Thunderbird 4 is on its way. Sir, there's a message just come in from Central Control. It's pretty serious, I'm afraid. Well, things couldn't be much worse than they are now. Well, what's their problem? The land subsidence is spreading. It looks like the Fulma Finance Building is in danger now and could go over as well. Fulmer Finance? Now, which building is that? That one. Lucky everybody was evacuated from that area. Well, that's not the point. That building is going to collapse right on top of that rescue hole. And it's going to start a tidal current that'll hit those guys in there like an avalanche. They got about two and one half minutes before that building goes over. The geologists reckon that after that, anything can happen. Thanks, Garner. I guess you heard that. Thunderbird 4 from Rescue Control. Gordon, do you hear me? Loud and clear, Scott. No sign of these fellas as yet. Gordon, now listen. You've got to locate them within the next two minutes. There's another building up here that's going to collapse. And the impact could cave in the whole area where those guys are swimming. I tell you what, Scott. Leave the frequency open, and they can try to guide me to them. I wonder where the heck they are. The 
the air level gauge reads empty. And Joe's in a bad way. Like, don't panic. There's probably still some air left in those tanks. We found it. There's just enough room to get through. Come on, Joe. Swim. That tower's gonna give any moment. like to be under that baby when she goes over. Hey, Gordon, any signal from them yet? Afraid not, Scott. Uh, keep going. We've got to find them. Come to a wall of rock. It's a dead end. Uh, uh, hold it. No. It's a sharp bend. The tunnel goes off to the right. They're close. If only they can hang on just a few more seconds. Ned, you've got to keep going. Search for Thunderbird 4's beacon. Look out for a beacon. Ned! Joe, swim! Joe! They found us! Joe! C come on! We've got to swim! I can't see them, Scott. I can't see them. Okay, I got them. Ned, this is Thunderbird 4. I'm opening hatch. Swim into hatch! Gordon. Get the heck out of there! Welcome once again to the Ned Cook Show. As you know, Ned has not missed a performance in the last 167 weeks. A few days ago, 
Ned was involved with his cameraman in a disaster from which there seemed no escape. But true to his unique record, Ned is here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Ned Cook. Thank you. Thank you, friends. As you see, I made the show. And what a show we have for you tonight. But first, I have one very important thing to say. My cameraman and I are only alive today because of the unselfish action of an organization that is dedicated to its chosen task of rescuing people who normally would certainly die. I refer to International Rescue. I'm going to take this opportunity to thank the people behind that great organization. No one knows who they are or where they come from, but come they do and help they bring. I only hope that somehow my words will reach those gallant people. International Rescue, on behalf of Joe and myself, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah.